Over 4,500 basketball players have graced the NBA courts throughout its history. Yet to earn a spot on the all-time 75 list or the top 1% requires greatness. Rick Barry was a true legend of the game. He received much attention for his distinctive free throw technique. His impact was immediate, taking the league by storm to clinch the Rookie of the Year title in 1966. In a triumphant 1975 season, Barry led the Golden State Warriors to the championship and was awarded MVP honors after averaging 29 points per game in the series sweep against the Washington Bullets. But get this, his unconventional free throw method contributed to an impressive 90% career free throw percentage, alongside his distinction as an eight-time NBA All-Star. What a legend. Hi everyone, welcome to Swish Society. And today we've got a, we're going to interview a legend of the game, uh, NBA champion, top 75 player of all time, one of the greatest to play the game. It's an honor, Mr. Rick Barry. Thank you for joining us, Rick. My pleasure. Uh, I should say good day. Good day, mate. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. And uh, we're just admiring your shirt. You're a, you're a Warriors legend. Um, you know, we, we Curry, Curry himself is probably one of the greats ever, the greatest shooter. But, um, yeah, we, we want to see more championships. Yeah, well, he's, uh, he's an anomaly. I call players who play their position differently than anybody's ever. There's never been a player like him before. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. plays the way he plays. And so he definitely is an anomaly. I mean, there's a bunch of guys like that. Uh, Will Chamberlain was an anomaly, Magic Johnson, mm-hmm. Charles Barkley, <clears throat> just a whole bunch of guys that did things differently uh, than they were ever done before. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. And he's, he's really changed the game. Uh, I mean, like I've, I've seen videos of kids, like they, they really, uh, they look to scoring threes more than, than ever before. Well, it's like Woods changed, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods changed golf. Mm. He worked out yeah. there. They never had. I used to broadcast the PGA Tour. They never had trailers with workout equipment and stuff like that until Tiger came along and dominated things. And now everybody wants to be, especially the young kids. They can relate to him because he's not some big Adonis. Looks like some Greek god. I mean, he's a normal sized guy. And he's killing them out there doing it. And now everybody wants to shoot the efficiency. Mm. And the percentages that guys are shooting three-point shots now are just its off the charts. It's one of the reasons why you see the scoring up so high in the NBA these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, I mean, look, we just had the All-Star game uh, recently. No, and please, please. The one, one team is playing. Don't call it the All-Star game, please. It's not a game. Just call it the All-Star exhibition. Call it what it is. It is not a game. Yeah. To me, it's an embarrassment because I played in an All-Star game that was highly – highly competitive. That was a serious basketball game. The last thing that the all-star exhibition is, is serious. Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, last year, it was just, I just said, oh, this is enough. It was that one-on-one between Jason Tatum and, um, and Jalen Brown and like all the defenses that watching them doing one-on-ones. Like, it's, where, where's the it's an exhibition? That's what it's all of what it is. It's an mm. exhibition. All of what it is the best part about all-star weekend was the shootout between Sabrina and Steph. Yeah, exactly. Even the three-point contest, I mean, Dame winning it uh, back-to-back, you know, they were, like, they were like the highlights of the whole All-Star weekend, really. But, that's, I mean, that's the thing. Like, where's the, where's the passion? Like, the, I mean, there's, um, it's just about – I don't understand why it's come to that. Is it because of the changes in the league, like the, the changes in the rules, like the, the passion? Money on the line. The these guys the no- serious game they don't want to play a serious game but you can just as easy sometimes go out and get hurt screwing around i mean so just make it for what it is i mean you see some incredible things that they do and you know have some fun with it if you're there with that attitude it's great but please let's not call it a game don't talk about a new record that they said it's a joke yeah i agree with that i agree with that i miss the old days i mean and that's where that i mean you obviously playing the all-star yourself like you 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 know firsthand the difference. So what about, um, okay, so you've had an illustrious career, a long career. Um, what about the, the really want to get into the mental game. So 
if you can share with us some insights of the, the mental aspects, how you maintain focus during high pressure situations when you're when you're playing in the, the greatest league in the world. Well, first of all, I'll, I'll get into my point that I hear every time I hear the word use and you just used it, and that's pressure. Pressure doesn't exist. Pressure only exists if you don't have confidence in your ability to do what you're asked to do. What happens is you're faced with critical situations, important situations. You're supposed to go out and what? Do what it is you've trained to do. How is that pressure? It's only pressure if you don't have confidence in your ability to do it. I never felt pressure at a basketball court ever. So that's an overused word in the lexicon of, of sports. It's used so much that it almost makes me want to throw up because I never felt pressure. And I know what pressure is like because I felt it. It's too long a story to talk about when I competed in the Superstars competition. And I actually felt pressure for the first time when I choked like a dog. And it was the most embarrassing moment of my sports career. But so it will eliminate that from the equation. But the other thing is, if I could, when I coached, I tried to realize I couldn't teach. I can't teach you to stay focused. That's an individual thing that has to be learned. You have to figure out what you need to do to keep your head in the game. Like say, you know, a lot of them get your head in the game. Well, that's true. You lose focus. When you lose focus, just look at what happened to Boston the other night, 22 point lead against Cleveland. They lost their focus and they wound up losing the game that they should have won. And this happened to the Warriors on numerous occasions. It happens to every team in team sports, especially football games, the same thing. You can play hard. Coach, you know you can play hard, put the effort in. But if your head's not in it and you're not really focused on what you're supposed to do, you can, you'll be a half a step late reacting. And if you're a half a step late in basketball, you're history. I tell people when I played, I didn't have to get by my guy. I needed a half a step. I just needed to get, if I get you on my shoulder, I own you. And that's the half a step. And that's the focus part of it. They lose their focus. And when I coached in the minor leagues, I used to keep track of things. If you could play 40 minutes of a 48 basketball game with your team being focused on both ends of the court, you're going to win a lot of basketball games and be one of the best teams in the league. It's a very difficult thing to get teams to learn how to do to stay focused. And we kept statistics. We figured, okay, how long were we focused? And it was amazing, the correlation. The more minutes that we stayed focused in the game, the bigger the differentiation was as far as differential between points and the more points we won by. How would you, how would you say, I mean, looking at the teams today, I mean, talking about focus, I'd, I'd say the Celtics look pretty focused. Um, they're, I mean, is it all firepower? Because they've got an amazing roster. Or is it the system? Joe Mazzola, obviously, he's a, he's a newish sort of coach in the NBA. How, how would you well, they have, talent. they have tons of talent. They have tons of talent. And, you know, the big thing is, is they, they but they have a tendency to lose focus. That's what they, they lost to the Warriors, you know, when the Warriors won the championship because they lost their freaking focus. They, again, the Warriors, a lot of teams, teams are their own worst enemy. The Boston Celtics are one of those teams that falls into that category. They're their own worst enemy. They cause themselves more problems than other teams do. The Warriors in the same way with their turnovers and some of the other things that they do. And that's the whole key. When you're focused, you won't make as many mistakes. You're not going to lead, have that lead to opportunities for the opposition to be able to score some easy points. And so the Celtics fall into that category. The Warriors fall into that category. Most every team falls into that category. Mm-hmm. That the loss of focus creates other issues that will cause you to lose basketball games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. What are, um, what are your thoughts on Nikola Jokic? I mean, he's just, he oh, seems to be such uh, a powerhouse. He and Steph Curry, my two favorite players to watch. Play. That's why it was so much fun to be at the Warriors game because I got to see my two favorite players. I love watching Steph and I love watching the Joker. The Joker is just so efficient. I mean, he just is so efficient. He understands the game. He doesn't do a lot of wasted stuff. His head's in the game. He can pass it. He can shoot the three. He can shoot the mid range. He can get in and tip the ball. He can get in and do spin moves and lefty, righty. I mean, the guy is just a fabulous, well-rounded basketball player who's not some super great athlete. He's not in there jumping eight, you know, three feet over the basket and doing all kinds of crazy things like Giannis could do and some of these other guys. He's just one of the most efficient players to ever play. He's a larger version of Larry Bird. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a great comparison, actually. Yeah, and his his vision as well. Uh, they, they they try and double team him. There's no answers for him. Feel, feel for the game, court vision, knowing his teammates. Uh, the guys, if, if, if you if you 
get to watch the Joker and you can't really appreciate how good he is, then you don't understand the game of basketball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So definitely someone that has goat aspirations maybe in, in the coming years, uh, same as Curry, you know. They're, they're, well, they're he's yeah, no, he's one. One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. no, he's an anomaly. No, he's an anomaly. No, he's an anomaly. There's, there's never been a player to play the center position the way the Joker is playing mm-hmm. right now. There's never been a guy like that. The closest that would come to that, and he was never super healthy, was probably Bill Walton, who was so smart, seeing the floor, passing, rebounding, doing other things. But Bill wasn't a three-point shooter like the Joker is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's special. No question. His all-around game is just, it's just unmatched. Okay, let's not get into a goat debate here, because <laughs> I, I think I know where. You, first of all, first of all, hold on, hold on. Depends hold on, on the position, let me, right? Let me let me first of all, there is no discussion about goat yeah. and yeah. team sports mm-hmm. unless you do it by position. Yes, to yes, say that Michael yeah. Jordan's the greatest player of all time is <laughs> excuse my language, that's ridiculous. He, mm-hmm. You want to have a maybe you can say he's the greatest two guard of all time, possibly, but don't stop comparing era to era. Don't mm-hmm. compare Kevin players in the 60s with people in the 2015s or 20s. That's ridiculous. If I was playing today with the technology that exists today in training, I would be faster, stronger, quicker, more endurance, jump higher. People say I couldn't play today. I said, you're out of your mind. I'd be so much better. We didn't have a strength coach, an agility coach, a dietitian. We didn't. Tra- we traveled commercially. We had horrible seasons. We had, we had four games and five nights in four different cities traveling commercially. There is no comparison between what these guys have and what we do. So people need to stop all of this. Okay. Go by positions. You can have a meaningful conversation. Who's the best center during that decade? Who's the best during that decade? Who's the best point guard? Who's the best this or whatever? No greatest of all time. Doesn't Mm -hmm. exist. You want to talk about that in golf? And even then, the same thing. In golf, it's hard to say because look at the technology that has come about in 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 the equipment that they have. What do you think Jack Nicholas or Pomper could have done if they had the equipment that's available to these guys today? Sure. In basketball, the equipment didn't change. It's not like they came up with some new basketball to help you. you know? I think people, you know, I think people, people like to get getting better. Yeah. Sneakers. That's true. I, I think people like to get he, like into the conversation of it. As we know, Michael Jordan is probably widely considered as the goat for most people. Uh, you know, but it seems to be a, a that, conversation between him and LeBron at the moment. I mean, no, but here's the thing that's only because of the talking heads, and the talking heads drive me absolutely nuts. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. They you know you as a person sitting there. I'm like, that's because they bring it up, they bring it up, and they brainwash the people about it. It's insane to talk about the greatest of all time in a team sport. It has to be by position because the skills required to play each position are different. You're not going to compare Michael Jordan. You tell me Michael Jordan's a greater player than Will Chamberlain was. Makes no sense. That would be like saying, okay, who's better, Sandy Koufax or Willie Mays in baseball? You can't compare that. Who's better, Tom Brady or Jim Brown? Come on. Team sports, you can't do it. I mean, you do think about Bill Russell's career. I mean, like, people seem to overlook what he's achieved as well. Isn't he's it? not the greatest of all time. He wasn't the greatest of all time. He was, he was, he was, he was the one player probably had more impact on a team's success than any one player over a long period of time. But he's not the greatest center. He wasn't the greatest center when he was playing. Will Chamberlain was. You take, you take still average 22 field. rebounds per game for his career. Will Chamberlain averaged 22.5 rebounds for his career. 22.5. The man scored 50 points a game in a season. Never in the history of the game will it ever happen again. He's done things that are off the charts. From the skill standpoint of all the things that a player can do at the center position, there has never been anyone who has been as great as Will Chamberlain was in certain areas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Other guys are super great doing some things. I mean, you know, Will, hey, Will led the league in assists one season. Yes. Yeah. I mean, come on. But it's, it's yeah. hardly overlooked these days. I mean, you just, the maybe, media yeah, and the, getting people's emotions. I mean, the, you know, the, the coverage of Jordan is so vast. Like, it's sort of that, that's always really seen now, isn't it? Like, 
People, he's people are questioning. People are questioning. Will they even score hundred points these days? Yeah, well, let's not get into stuff and everything. That's ridiculous. I mean, Will yeah. Chamberlain is been somebody like him. There never will be anybody as dominant a player in his position what Will was at the center position. Mm-hmm. You no, know, this won't happen. Yeah. No, interesting to hear your take. Thanks. Uh, so what was your, what was it like so after you, you played, after your career in, in the NBA, you, you um, were an analyst for, for many years. So, so what was your experience like with that? Well, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's the second best job. I mean, the best job is playing. The second best job is getting to talk about it. It was kind of fun to do that. Uh, and in both cases, they just forgot zeros on the contracts, both as a player, especially three, at least three zeros on my contracts. But uh, and the same thing with broadcasting. Now they're paying these broadcasters outrageous sums of money. They didn't do that. When I broadcast the turn of broadcasting, they never even promoted the announcers. Never. That, that was not part of the deal. It was no, it was TNT or TBS. It wasn't, it wasn't now they promote this stuff. I mean, they promote, you know, Charles Barkley and Shaq and Kenny and Bernie Johnson and all It's It's a big deal. I mean, they didn't do that back in my day, but that's life. So, you know, things change. Timing is everything in life. Uh, but I love the broadcasting. It was fun. I mean, I got to get a, one of the best, the best seat in the house, right? Center court <laughs> right there. I mean, what you, and I got to talk about a sport that I love dearly, that I has such an important part of my life. It was an awesome job. It was like stealing me. They actually paid me to do that. I said the same way. Somebody's paid to play basketball. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. What about, um, okay, we, we, they just announced the team for, for Team USA for the Olympics. So, you know, Embiid, Tatum, Durant, LeBron Curry. How good do you think they'll perform? Can we can we call Team USA the dream team again? Uh, no, I don't think they'll ever be a team quite as good. They realized that they had players back on, the, on that dream team that really knew how to play the game from more like old school basketball. And they realized also that you can't just put a bunch of name players, star players on a team and win because they lost. They found that out. I mean, the other the world is you know caught up skill wise. And so they finally got smart and started putting guys on the team to play roles and to play the game the way it needs to be played. You know, certainly any team that we put together, you know, as the United States team representing the United States, this is going to be a great basketball team, but they're not going to ever dominate like they used to in the old days when the other teams couldn't even win a game. I mean, it went, you know, forever and ever before anybody even won a game. Um, you know, I was part of actually broadcasting when the Soviets won that controversial game that Doug Collins was on. In fact, they never even kept their med- their silver medals. That was so many things that happened in that game where the United States got so hosed. It was unbelievable. So, but, you know, to the credit of the players around the world, you know, basketball has improved dramatically. I mean, just look at how many foreign players are playing on NBA teams right now. You know, even though you, you've got your Aussies in representing the United States for that. And one of the guys was not- my son was had an Aussie teammate when he was at San Antonio, right? When he won the championship, and uh, yeah, and and, and well, I always remember about Australia because my wife ran women's basketball for years. And I was at the Olympics and all. <laughs> it was when the when the Aussie women came out in those skin tight freaking uniforms that they wore. That was quite quite the thing. It was a, <laughs> that was yeah. I think we um sort of uh, innovated. <laughs> No, nah, that was that was. Well, I guess the guys all up, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I always have a dear spot in my heart because I, my wife and I actually we, we honeymooned in uh, in Australia and in, in the North Island of New Zealand. So uh, Australia always be special for me is uh, because of that. I I, I oh. loved our time there. Yes, and look, we 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 got some players coming through. You know, we got uh, guys like Josh Giddy. I mean, you know. Uh, who else is there? We, I mean, coming through, he's a, he's a young kid. I mean, he's still working his way through the league. But um, yeah, my my, son, my older son Scooter also played there in Australia for a while. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, so I've got one more question for you, uh, Rick. Uh, what is your all-time NBA starting five? Uh, well, if I had to win really on it, man. I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you my starting five, but I'm playing small forward. Uh, <laughs> and so that means I'm eliminating LeBron from the equation as great as he is and amazing as he is, because I, I would love to play against LeBron. So I'm going to take the three spot and then I'm going to take, it's the hardest thing for me to do is say, okay, here's, 
if we're going to play with the three point shot, I have to take Steph Curry. Hmm. I, and there's no way I'm not going to play without Steph Curry if I can pick my team and we're three point shots part of the rules. Then I'm going to play, and then I'm going to take Michael Jordan as my two. I'm going to play the three. I'm going to take Bill Russell as my four and Will Chamberlain as my five. And I will be happy to play any five people you want us to play against. It's hard because, you know, Magic Johnson, Oscar Roberts, who I have great respect and I'm very unbelievable player size and everything, but they weren't three point shooters. The three point is such an important part of the game. Now, if I don't have the three point shot, then it comes down. Do I want Oscar or do I want magic? Okay, because that's those would be the two guys that I would have to really give serious consideration to. I, I probably would tend to go with magic because of this. I mean, as great as Oscar was, and I have great respect and admiration for Oscar, I don't, with Wilt Chamberlain and Michael Jordan on my team, I don't need a guy to get me 30, another 30 point score, because I want a few shots myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I, I'd like to have the guy that he's going to go out to get 20 assists for me. Okay? And Oscar could get him too. But my magic is pat, move, right? Showtime, up and down the floor. That was me. Run, run, run. We're going to have Michael Jordan running. I'm running. Michael, you know, magic's running. You got, well, I mean, that that's that's who I would go with. I'd probably go with magic. Mm-hmm. If, if, you're, if you're playing the... the- yeah, if you're playing that game, but it, it's also hard to say. I mean, I also have great admiration, respect, and think he's an anomaly as well. Is I've never seen a, a set well a seven footer playing like Kevin Durant plays, and then you know now, you know with the new kid. I mean, uh, Wemby. I mean, God dang. I mean, I saw a picture of him standing next to him. He makes LeBron look like a little child. I mean, standing next to him, he just dwarfs him. I can't even imagine with a guy that size and if he gets bigger and stronger and stays healthy and really works at the games, don't tell him, you know, how good he's going to become. However, I will say this, he's not going to be another world champion. Mm, yeah. Mm. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. As you, as you said, anomaly, there's been anomalies through, throughout basketball. Oh yeah. You know, it happens all the time. It's, it's a lot. I've gotten to see so many great players. I got to play against so many great ones and, I, I enjoy greatness in anything in life. Somebody's great at what they do. I have great admiration and respect for them. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how Wemby develops. Um, mm. And as good as LeBron was, LeBron could have been better. Uh, LeBron had shortcomings in this game. I made a big deal about his shooting for him when he came in the league. It took three, four seasons at all before he actually started to become a better shooter. He's never been a great shooter. That's his Achilles. I mean, he's never been an 80% free throw shooter. Never. And, uh, and in fact, if anything, he's missed more free throws in the last two minutes of the game than most than he's up there at the top of the list, you know, the top of the list, this guys who have missed free throws down the stretch because he's not a great shooter. Never has been a great shooter. He's gotten a lot better. I mean, he may be shooting it better now than he ever has from three point range and all and done it, but that was his Achilles. And I, I can't believe that you had a player like that in your team and you didn't work with him on it. My God, that was just amazing. And also he was not. He was not great at facing. He did too much off the dribble, and then he's finally starting to do it now with his size. Why he didn't have a post up game? It's like I didn't understand why Dirk Nowitzki didn't do post up. He always had small guys guarding him. Get a post up game and abuse people. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, have a well rounded game. You should be able to play inside, outside, wherever with the skill and talent that some of these guys had. But you know, as great as LeBron was, I think he could have been greater. There's no doubt in my mind about that. You say he's he's, he's an anomaly because many do. Oh, he's an anomaly. I've never been a guy with his size and strength. And I mean, this guy was a man child. I saw him in high school. I said, oh my God, is this guy going to be a hell of a player? I said, but he's got to learn how to shoot better. And the other guy that I said could be a hell of a player with his size doing it, but he never learned how to shoot. And that's your Australian guy. You know what I'm talking about? Come on. This test. Patty. 6'9", LSU. Not Andrew Gaines, was it? Huh? No, big disappointment. Black. Light skinned black. Oh, Simmons. Yeah, thank you. Ben Simmons. I saw him in college. My son, my son, my son Canyon played against him in college. And I got to see uh, see him there. I said, Oh my God, if this guy ever learns how to shoot the ball, could he be something special? Because he was he was like a Magic Johnson type of body, the things he could pass, the way he saw the court, but he couldn't shoot. And at least Magic learned how to be able to shoot it, score some points and do stuff, but he just never did. I mean, that that was yeah, what a what a waste of great talent. I mean, this guy should have been special, really special. I'm, I'm amazed he achieved as much as he did for these first five seasons. 
uh, with the 76ers. I mean, all star, all, all defensive talent. teams. But he has so much talent. He has a feel for the game and he can dish it and pass it and do stuff and all, but he just, mm-hmm. he never developed the skills that he needed to develop. And that's something you can learn. Mm-hmm. But he had what you can't teach, which is a feel for the game to see the court and get the ball to yeah. people. And he had that. He had that going for him. That's why when I saw him in college, I said, oh. but I said, man, he's got to learn how to shoot. I mean, he's got to be a better shooter. You know, that's the thing with, with the Warriors with Kaminga. Kaminga is a nice player and he's got a chance, but, you know, he's got to get to the point where he becomes a more proficient and consistent three-point shooter because he attacks the basket. He's a little out of control at times. He's got to learn a little bit about that, but he's certainly a gifted player. Um, mm-hmm. But it's amazing to me how much money they pay guys who really have a lot of shortcomings in their game. I mean, it's like crazy. Mm-hmm. It's true. Okay, back to the Warriors just briefly. What are your thoughts on Chris Paul coming off the bench? I mean, does it work? Is it working? Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the key to a team's success is how does your bench do? Not just your starters. I mean, that's one of the reasons we won in 75 is we, we went deep. We went, we went 9, 9, 10 deep. Most teams don't do that, but now they're starting to do it. The Warriors are loaded again. They got That's what Steve Kerr's trying to figure out who to buy. I said, finally, I said, look, you got a lot of guys who are really good. But someone's not that much better in all. What you do is you just play the guys that are going. The guy's not going to boom, out of the game. Put another guy in. Let's see how he's doing. And they finally seem to have gotten that together early, uh, you know, and right before All-Star break. And other than the debacle against the Boston Celtics the other night, uh, they've been playing pretty good basketball. But, yeah, to have a guy like Chris Paul, a future Hall of Famer, look at the success the Warriors have. They took them 40 years to win another championship. And they did it how? By having two All-Star players be willing to come off the bench, Andre Iguodala and David Lee. It's true, yeah. But they had a system as well. I think it just really worked in building Steph and, and Clay, the Splash Brothers. And look, they're just, I know, and look, unfortunately, Clay at the moment, he's, he's really um, not playing the best, really. Uh, uh, but now he's off the bench. He seems to have found form again. Well, he should have accepted that earlier on. I, was, I kept saying, I said, Stay Steph, I mean, he needs to accept that because he can lengthen his career. And make it easier on him. He doesn't beat himself up as much. He's got the experience. He watches. He sees what's happened. He can come bring his experience into the game. And he's going to get to do what he what you want from him, which is you want him to be knocking down three-point shots. And so you come in and you run a bunch of stuff and try to get shots for him. If he's on, you keep going to him. If he's not, you bring somebody else back in. I mean, that's just the way. You, it's a matter of using your personnel in the most efficient way possible. And that is the way that's, that he can help the team more than anything else. I kept saying it when I do my podcast over here. I kept saying he needs to accept that. Forget your freaking ego. It's not about you anymore. It's, it should be always about the team. What can I do to help this team win? Well, that's what he needs to do to help the team win. And when he's been doing that, that's when they've become much more efficient and more productive. Mm, that's true. That's true. Well, that's all the questions I have for you today. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for your time. It's, it's, not, it's not raining, and I got to go play some pickleball. So I got to get ready for the. Uh, for the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships next month in uh, down in Naples, Florida. So I'll be, uh, be getting ready for that. So uh, that's my new passion in life is this pickleball. It's uh, an amazing sport. I heard about it. I was, I was yet to do some research about it, but, um, you know. Well, trust me, you can get hooked on it. It's addictive. It really <laughs> is. It's so fun. Anyway, all the best to okay. uh, y'all down here. Have a good time there, and hopefully at some time I'll get back. I want to go down there because I got to go do some fly fishing down in New Zealand. So I may get back down. <laughs> Well, if you ever make it to Sydney, where I am, you know, we'll we'll teach yeah, something up. We won't go our game. Yeah, the harbor, very special place, you know, and of course the, the you know the the beautiful architecture. But the, yeah, the the, the uh, that I, I went out and stood on the cliff, you know, on the entrance to the harbor. It's pretty spectacular over there. And then, of course, the great thing was just to go to that one zoo and everything. When I got to hold the koala bear, the little baby, that was kind of yeah. All right, and the wallabies, the kangaroos, yes. and all the other. Yes. Anyway, it's, it's great. It was great down there. I was there, and I, when my wife and I were on our, on our honeymoon. I actually got to see your version of the Super Bowl. I got to see the rugby championships, and oh, I got to go to some. So that was really kind of cool to see that. And then, of course, I absolutely love Aussie football with the guy in the white. Yeah. And, the, and the, the very high shorts. Yes. But yeah. No, it was, what What is your thoughts on on the way we play we play football rugby? So. You, we don't have any of the crazy. Well, they, they play rugby over here too. No pad. It's crazy. I mean, my God. I mean, football, hey, football's bad enough with pads on. <laughs> yeah. 
That's that's like crazy. I mean, yeah. there's I learned at a very early age that if one of the objects of the sport was to hit the opponent, I wasn't playing that sport. I was a skinny little runt growing up. There's no way I was going to be a rugby player. I mean, that's that's you, if you don't like contact, then you don't. You know, come on. The, the only thing crazy about that is to be a boxer. <laughs> Right. At least you can lay out your frustrations. Well, at least there, you know, somebody's not trying to punch you, although I'm sure that in some of those scrums, there's some punches being thrown occasionally. (laughs) All right. All the best. Great to talk to you. Thanks, Eric. Bye. Thanks for your time.